We're going to talk about the migrant issue. This is an ongoing issue for, well, I think most of the country, uh, but certainly for Conservative voters, the abject failure to actually deal with the huge number of migrants. 33,000 are known. That's just the ones we know about have crossed the channel from France in the, uh, the well, this year since the beginning of January. We're only in October. Uh, we saw on some days 1,200-plus sort of people coming in one day. Suella Braverman, the new Home Secretary, has vowed to take this issue on. Uh, in an interview earlier in the week, uh, she did talk about how now the number of migrants are uh, basically include 80 percent Albanians not a war-torn country not people fleeing persecution but just people paying the people traffickers uh, well uh, the latest plan to be announced by Swella Bravman in her speech this afternoon well today is, is that uh, bringing in a new law effectively barring channel migrants from ever claiming asylum uh, in Britain uh, with a blanket ban going further than what Priti Patel the former Home Secretary had done with uh, her Nationality and Borders Act brought in earlier this year well let's talk to Stephen Wolfe about this he's director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity. Good morning to you, Stephen. Good morning, Julian. Um, another Home Secretary, another plan to tackle the channel migrant issue. How confident are you uh, that this one might actually work, such as we have detail about it? I, I'm more confident. I'm not as um, phlegmatic about people's uh, performances of Priti Patel. I think she had a hard job at the beginning, but she moved the process forward, the new immigration bill that became law was difficult. She had to fight the civil service to get it. She's had to take on some of the French and she, she created the Rwanda plan even in the face again once more not only the civil servants but the immigration legal industry. Now Suela Braverman is able to take on to the next step and the really key and important step and that is challenging those who believe in the European Court of Human Rights which I believe is really just acting the judges that act like bouncers preventing law enforcement from stopping people traffickers making money. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, there's, there, there is a fundamental issue here as a, as a country that has voted to, voted to have, you know, national sovereignty. The idea that any foreign court should have jurisdiction over us. I and mean, America doesn't accept any courts having jurisdiction over them. Uh, we, you know, we, even with their trade deals with Canada and Mexico, they don't accept a court that tells them what they can and can't do with their borders. So this is certainly a big issue. But um, there is going to be a lot of fight back on this. Now, Priti Patel, to a certain extent, um, although she probably had exactly the same intentions as Swella Bravman, she didn't have a prime minister who backed her on this issue. Boris Johnson, I mean, he'd previously been very, shall we say, lax on the issue of immigration. It wasn't a big issue for him as, as a Brexit argument. It was just something uh, that was still you know, contained in the Brexit uh, deal. Um, in terms of Swella Braverman getting the support from Liz Truss, and you know, we've, we've seen that comment, that friend or foe, well, you know, time will tell um, uh, remark from Liz Truss in one of the hustings. Um, do, do you think that actually, if the government is very clear that this is something they do care about and that they will then have to deliver? Well, they have to be extremely clear about it. You're quite right that Boris Johnson only decided to turn up to the game of immigration once people started dying in the channel and it became an international mm. issue. The problem with Liz Truss is there's deep concerns about whether she really believes this and whether her Liberal Democrat open-door migration instincts of her past are still there because she has pointed to the fact that she wants to open the borders to Britain to low-skilled immigration to try and solve another economic issue. And that therefore leaves people wondering whether she really will be strong behind this critical issue for those MPs like Jonathan Gillis, who was there on your programme a moment ago, who know that their constituents will be voting for the Conservative Party only if they decide to stop immigration. She has to be strong, and not just strong, she has to be as strong as Margaret Thatcher was, and echo those sentiments when she really took on Europe. Well, this, this, I mean, this is a very, very big issue, isn't it? But there's a big difference between, I mean, again, I'm still amazed at the number of people, certainly on the Labour side, who, who will be perfectly supportive of illegal immigration, as this is from people arriving from France, from a completely safe country, uh, choosing to come to, to this country and pay people traffickers, um, and, and legal migration. But as I say, you have touched on an issue, many people voting for Brexit, it wasn't just about uh, immigration, it was about national sovereignty, it certainly was for me, and democracy, democratic accountability. But for a lot of people, it was about being able to control our borders and choose who comes here. There is an argument, certainly, I'm sure we both agree, to have high-skilled um, immigrants who can benefit this country. But there's also an argument, I know that Liz Truss is making this, that actually we also need some other migrants to do the jobs that, frankly, our homegrown population won't do. The picking of the, the fruit and the veg and the like. There are lots of jobs working in care homes. There are lots of jobs, it would appear, that Brits don't want to do at the price currently being offered. So what is the solution? 
Well, that goes much deeper, question about the issues of economics to migration, immigration. One could argue why have one and a half million 50-year-olds decided to leave the, the workplace uh, after COVID? Is it because they are uh, saying they want to have a better life? Or is it because they're concerned about having to always face woke policies in their workplaces? Is it because they have to have... Uh, constant lessons on diversity and, and stuff like that. That's what I hear. They say they don't want it anymore. What about taxation issues, improving the tax uh, possibilities for those people coming back into the workforce? So Liz Trust has to look at how we improve our workforce and bringing in low-skilled migration just isn't the only solution to it. It has to be broader, wider and more cleverly thought out than those who simply say, bring in, ship them in. Yeah. And again, once again, when you're looking at a short-term solution and therefore we never actually deal with a long-term solution. Like, why do we need to import doctors at a rate far higher than most other European countries? Because we don't train enough ourselves and we need the impetus, the incentive to actually do that. Well, that's right. And, and we've seen that before. I mean, when, when I produced the Leave Means Leave paper, Fair, Flexible and Forward Thinking, immigration policy we did analyze the issue about nurses and doctors and one of the key points was talking to african nations who felt there was a modern form of colonialism where they'd be training their own nurses and suddenly yeah. people from trusts here would be flying into their countries offer larger salaries and it wasn't doing them any good whatsoever so our country needs to be about focusing on training our own, improving the conditions of people working here, improving their living standards, and making it exciting to work in British jobs, rather than complying with those large corporates who say, look, Liz, if you bring in mass, mass migration, we can keep inflation down, but we do so by keeping wages yeah. down. That is not right, keep and wages it's not down, a modern which, way of dealing which, with it. Which we then subsidise with benefits, quite bizarrely, while we're subsidising corporate profits there. 828 is done. Big thanks uh, uh, to uh, Stephen Wolfe there. Just a really quick one from Ali Marish. I mean, this is separating, you know, legal and, and illegal immigration, but this is still a massive big issue, isn't it? Well, I think we were meant to be creating a high-skilled, uh, high-wage economy. I mean, now, that there, <laughs> now there's been a realisation that actually there are massive gaps. People can't fill all the jobs, or they don't want to fill all the jobs. You need people to come and do this work. There is an argument. Maybe when people are hungry enough, they will want to the jobs. <coughs> well, there's also an argument that wages were going to go up. Well, they obviously haven't gone up sufficiently high, high enough for that to attract people. We, maybe we jobs. have to accept that we're going to have to pay more for certain goods to get people to, you know, pick the strawberries or, or whatever it is. Anyway, we've got more from you. At